JavaScript is an object-oriented language, and as such, it is important to understand the nature of objects in JavaScript. In JavaScript, almost everything is an object. Everything except primitive values are objects, and they start as objects. Unlike traditional object-oriented languages, there is no need to create a class in order to instantiate an object. Over the past several tutorials, I have addressed different topics associated with objects. And I thought in this movie, it would be important to address the basics. There are concepts that sometimes get forgotten, but are at the heart of JavaScript. Now, all these tutorials regarding objects, I'll compile into a playlist and provide a link in the description of this tutorial. I also refer to other concepts in this tutorial and you can find links to those in the description section as well. Now first, let's talk about the basic idea of an object. An object is a collection of values, and those values can be many different types, as shown with this image. For example, first name and last name are string values. Levels complete is an array. An array is a special type of object in JavaScript. Full name is a function. When a function is assigned to an object, we call it a method. Now, function is an object as well. It's a special kind of object in JavaScript. Date started, that is a date. That is an object as well. And so on this object we've created, we have some primitive data values in first name and last name, but then we have some other types of values as well. An array, a function, and a date object. Now there are three ways to create objects in JavaScript. You can use the keyword new. You can create an object using object literal notation. And you can also use object.create to create an object. Let's quickly look at those three methods. So I'm going to open up the console. We'll do it right here in the console. So first, let's take a look at the keyword new. So if I wanted to create a user-defined object, I could use the keyword new with what we call the object constructor. That's going to create an object. It will be a blank object. I have not defined anything in it. Now, keyword new works with other special types of objects that are found in JavaScript as well. For example, to create an array, I can use the keyword new with the array constructor. That is a, an array without any values in it. Date, as we saw in the image example, we use the keyword new to create that. And as some may not be aware, you can also use the keyword new to create functions. That's hardly ever used, but it does work. For example, right here, this will create a function using the function constructor. When I press return, I can then execute that function by adding parentheses at the end, and it will invoke it. So using the keyword new is one way to create an object. Literal notation is another way. And this is the preferred way. This is the most common way. If you're creating a user-defined object, this is how you would do it. That's the object literal notation for that. You do the same thing if you're creating an array which is a special type of object in JavaScript. You can use literal notation for that as well. And we all know that creating a function, the common method for doing that is not using the function constructor. Now, as we've talked about in another tutorial, constructors can be user-defined as well. So I can set up a constructor that will create user-defined objects. So I don't have to just use the constructors that are already a part of JavaScript. All right, I mentioned a third way. And we talk about this 
particular command in more detail in the tutorial on prototypes. But it's object.create. And the advantage of using object.create to create an object is that you can specify the prototype for that object. I'm going to put the keyword null in there and so that this object will not have a prototype associated with it. If I then look at object 3, we can see it's a blank object, nothing associated with it, there is no prototype. So that's the third method for creating an object. Now, dot notation is the common way to access the elements on an object the properties and methods. It's also the preferred way for setting those. For example, obj3 has nothing in it right now, but I can certainly define a property using dot notation. Now obj3 has something that's a part of it. So dot notation is very common for setting or accessing properties and methods on an object. Now I have created an object. I'm going to jump to Sublime really quick. I've created an object user1. This is very similar to the image that we showed at the start of this tutorial. Basically it has a first name, last name, levels complete, a full name which is a function and returns the first name concatenated to the last name. That's what it does. This has special use within objects. The value of this can be a bit tricky at times in JavaScript. But to simplify that for this presentation, when you are invoking a method on an object, this refers to the object itself. So that's the object I've created. Now, let's look at accessing some of those properties. Obviously, dot notation is a great way to do that. I could change that as well. So change first name to Steven. So dot notation allows us to access and allows us to set values on an object. Now that is just not user defined objects. I could do that on an array as well. For example, up here, array 2 I created. I can set a first name property on an array. So array2, it now has a property first name. Notice the length property. This is a property you get by default when you create a special array object in JavaScript. So this is still an array and will function as an array. But I'm able to attach properties to it just to see that. I can push a value onto that array. Now it has a length of one. That's the same thing for functions as well. I can attach properties and methods to functions because they are just objects. And we can do that with dot notation. Now to access arrays on an object, levels complete was an array. And that's on an object using dot notation. At the end of that, I just use square brackets to access a value. Or I can use one of the methods of arrays to add additional values to that array. If I want to invoke a method that's on an array, I use dot notation as well. I just put parentheses at the end and that indicates to invoke that method. Now, one more way to access values of, of an object or to set values on an object is using square brackets. And this can be a very powerful feature at times. So for example, if I wanted to access the first name value, I can do this and it returns it. So what the square brackets do is they evaluate what is contained between the square brackets and then if that evaluates to a property name, it returns that property value. So I could also do something like this.
put an expression inside of those square brackets. And that works as well. So that can be very powerful in certain situations for solving certain coding problems. Now, let me do this. I'm going to declare a variable f name and set that equal to full name. Show you another way these square brackets can be used. So this is a variable. It's a variable is an expression, so it will it will evaluate that expression. So if I want to invoke the full name method on that object, user one square brackets f name, and then notice I put the parentheses at the end of it. So this will evaluate and find full name on the object, and then the parentheses will cause that to be invoked. And there we go, it returns the first name and last name concatenated together. Now, let's say I wanted to access the levels that have been completed on that object. So we have a variable that is equal to levels complete. If I now if I now enter a statement like what is shown here, let me just do that again. Using square brackets again. That will find the level com levels complete element, which is an array. And then we want to access the second element in that array. So we use a couple of square brackets together in order to access something in an array. So square brackets can be used to access data within an object and also set it, just like the dot notation can be used for the same thing. So those are some basics of working with objects. I think these are essential in order to make full use of objects in JavaScript. Objects are really the center of the JavaScript universe, so it is important to be able to work with them effectively. I hope you found that helpful. If so, please like the video. On our website, we have all of the tutorials we have published organized into different categories. You can access them using the URL that's on the screen. To view another video from our YouTube channel, simply click the video link in the center of the screen. To subscribe to our channel, click the circle link on the left of the screen. And to visit our website for a collection of tutorials and other resources such as courses, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.